Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials right now down 72. NASDAQ is up 12. S&P's uh, off one. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, as we do each and every Tuesday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Basil has an outstanding show here every trading day, 12 to 1 Eastern Standard Time. Also a great newsletter, the opening call. Now, it's very easy to get the opening call. You come over to our website at TFNN. You go under newsletters. You're going to see the opening call in the top right-hand corner. You hit the opening call, you hit subscribe, you can get the opening call for one month for $128. You can get it for six months for $595, which is a savings of $173. You can get it for a year for $995, which is a savings of $541. They all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So everything to win, zero to lose. Basil Chapman, I saw, uh, saw this morning, Tommy and I, and we're on. The first great white finally came back to Cape Town after 20 months. They've been, the, they've been missing. The great white really? sharks have been missing. Really? I did not know that. Yeah. They've been, I, all, they've been all down your way. They've been down the Cape, man. I, <laughs> a I, one day, a, a one different day I'll, Cape. One day I'll tell a funny story about uh, sharks and myself uh, back uh, in, Cape, in, in Cape Town. But uh, we can let it go for now. I love it. Okay, let's talk yeah. markets. Here we go. I get yeah. the charts up here. So um, on the left, I've got the day, the Dow Daily. In the middle is the weekly chart, and on the right is the monthly chart. Yeah. And you can see what's happened here. There's a trend line that the, the Dow went right into the top part, this little pink dashed line. It went right there. Then it started to pull back, and it had a spike on the 2nd of January to 28,872. And in the interim, We've had a pullback that has been bought because this black line, the 14 period exponential moving average, has acted as support and this green line, and I'm going to show this as a chart that I've shown you for weeks and weeks, and I've said this is really important to me. The nine period green line is way above the 14 period black line. Okay. I've got a rectangle and it's outlining that 28,000. Uh, 872 high from the second and I'm actually going back from the day before with the low was 28,376. So this is a process and I, I call it a process because you can see from way, way back in November we were looking at um, some pretty sharp quick moves to the downside and yet right there on the uh, right there that's on the 5th of December that green line refused to cross negative. It was so close, and then it went back again. So I have to consider that there's a process going on, and you can see it in the way that the market is acting, that it's very selective. And every day we've got a different stock that's moving very sharply higher, and even a different sector. And also now you're starting to see that fund managers are starting to go into what were low price stocks, the, uh, the oil and oil service, so that they're playing some kind of a trend here. But when you actually look at the Dow, you'll see that a lot of the stocks, at least that I look at in the Dow, are making Ds and Es in their daily chart, which says to me that they're getting somewhat toppy. Yet, I'm going to get off this right now because you can see the distance is still very good okay. between the two. But you're starting to slow down in the little histogram, and that's the distance between the two, shows that, they, that it's starting to narrow a little bit. But most importantly, it's this weekly chart. And the weekly chart, you see this little doji candle? Yes. Uh, I call it a long-legged candle. It looks like a little candle, but actually the, the price is quite big. But it opened and closed at the same price. That's really what a doji is. It opens and closes at about the same price. It looks like a plus sign. I like to look at it. You'll see there's a little plus sign right here. When we go the day after, there was a sell signal from the 19th of um, the week of the 19th of July. And so these little candles are essentially looking that we look at them as either halfway markers or reversal points. So this is going to be very important. If by Friday, with all this chopping around, what we're looking at at this particular point every day, uh, we're getting two or 300 points up or down, not really going anywhere. When you look at the left side chart and you just go back to a week and a half ago, we're kind of in that same area. But it's going to be very important if we get a close underneath the low of last week of 28,376, that'll suggest that, and without a new high this week, That'll suggest that we're looking at a peak C with very good technicals, which suggests that there could be a pullback, maybe a few weeks, just a, a, I'd say a rest period. At this point, that's what I'd be calling it. And that would be very important to, to give a breather and to have some of the stocks that have done so well 
start to reinvigorate, to re-energize for another move up because most of them, their, their monthly charts are still very good. So I'm looking at this as a period where we're looking at a rollover and it's a slow rollover with still, you know, I always talk about the tide. You go to the beach and it says high tide at noon. Yes. So at 12.06, there's a wave that didn't see the sign and it goes way up the beach and gets everybody wet. But when you turn around, the tide's going out. So that's called a rogue wave. And I think we're in, in this phase right now where we could, get, we could get a couple of flurries to the upside, but I see a lot of resistance in the low 29,000s. I would say in this particular phase, it, it looks to me like 30,000 has to wait before that's going to be reached. So that's kind of the way I'm looking at the overall market. And I'm also thinking for subscribers now, we've had some really nice positions. I, I think it's time to take some, a little more profits off and maybe raise some cash. And I don't see anything wrong with that because... Uh, there are always stocks that have had fabulous moves that you maybe missed on the upside that you want to get. So I think it's good to have some powder dry. But most importantly, um, there are sectors that have suddenly started to work. For instance, I, I thought that our cyber, the stock that we've had from 104, I thought this was turning down. Look, it made a peak after the Chapman wave at 126.79 on the 16th of December, pulled back sharply to 115. That's 11 points. That's 10 percent. And then all of a sudden, obviously because of the news, you know, cyber, this is cyber arc software, CYBR, sure. uh, trading at 128 right now. Um, so all of a sudden, network security has become the hot thing. And you just... You never know from week to week because technically it really looked like it was about to pull back a little more. So um, here it is at the recovery high, way off its 148.74 all time high. But I think it's time to be looking at certain sectors for me that have some appeal. And that's what we're trying to do. We're looking under the radar, we're looking at areas that probably have been oversold and maybe can now have a, a pretty good balance. So for subscribers, we've been very selective here. And as I said, I think it's, you know, we've been raising some cash. We might raise a little bit more cash. This is a very important period that we're coming into. Market has had a fabulous move. And here we are in at January. We've made a new high right at the very beginning of January. And the market, I think, is starting to get ready. If you look at the S&P, the S&P is the same thing. Um, the daily starting to look a little tired. The technicals are deteriorating in the MACD and stochastic, yet the nine period is still nicely above the 14. So I think it's a slow process. Monthly chart is still good. I'm just thinking this is time for a rest. You know what you need, Basil? You need, yes. you need, you need a couple analysts coming out saying Dow 50,000. <laughs> well, you know, we haven't had anything. And I, I know, people, I know. I asked over the weekend, I said, hey, has anybody at any of your New Year's Day party or Christmas party, right. whatever it is, with people coming up to you and talking about the stock market? Yeah. I have to tell you, I was at a, play, a party on, uh, on New Year's Day. There must have been 60, 65 people, maybe more. Not one, even the people that normally would talk to me about the market, not a single person even mentioned the market. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out, is it in their IRAs? Are they getting so scared because they lost so much money they don't want to say anything, knock on wood, that, do you know correct. what I mean? Because it's coming that back up. Correct, you know? But I think also politically, they didn't want to get involved in some kind of a conversation that they weren't prepared to have. Yeah, <laughs> but that's that's a fact, that's a fact. Yeah. Folks, come over to our website at TFNN, you go into newsletters, you see the opening call right there. Basil, have a great one, safe one. We look forward to the show tomorrow. Thank you very much, Tom. You Thank too. you. Stay right there, folks. Come